Okay, so here we have a mission to uh, fly out and engage a Shilka, an artillery piece, and a few dismounts. They're about uh, 30 kilometers north of us, just north of Kobaletti, situated on a small airstrip. Just kind of a training mission, training slash demonstration mission. And it's a one o'clock in the morning, so it'll be nice and dark. So launch the mission. And here we are in the in the chopper. Okay, so first thing is we can't see squat. So cool thing about the gazelle is it's got uh, some UV lamps up at the top of the up in the top of the cabin, and uh, you can turn those on with this little knob right here, which is conveniently located right at the bottom right of the console. And that circuit for the UV lamp is tied, tied directly into the battery. So you don't have to have any battery switches or anything on to, to run that. So then from there, that allows us to see all our major instruments and switches. Next thing we'll do is we'll turn on the battery alternator generator. Turn on the fuel pump. Wait 20 seconds. And it's been at least 20 seconds, so we'll turn on the starter. And we'll watch the starter spool up the turbine. This long skinny needle is the turbine RPMs. Okay, so now the uh, turbine RPMs have stabilized. So then we're going to need to start working a rotor brake lever and a fuel flow lever. But first I'll uh, turn on my night vision goggles so I can see those better. And we'll completely disengage the rotor brake. We'll grab a hold of the fuel flow lever. Start easing that baby forward until the rotor starts spinning. And then we'll stop moving it. We'll let the, uh, the rotor RPMs catch up before we start advancing the fuel flow more. So as I continue to hold the mouse button and, and or the uh, fuel flow lever, go back down and we'll observe the rotor RPMs on our gauge, which is the uh, small fat needle. Now that it's caught up to the turbine RPMs, we'll go ahead and advance the fuel flow lever slowly, making sure that the uh, the rotor RPM stays caught up with the turbine RPMs. Bring that all the way up to the uh, nominal level where it's supposed to stay, and we can release our lever. So now we can turn off our starter. And from there, we can turn on all of our other systems. So go ahead and start with the, uh, the gyro, which is necessary for autopilot functions. It takes about a minute to warm up. And then uh, we'll go ahead and put our navigation system to standby mode. Let it calibrate itself, and when it's done, these uh, these things will clear up.
We'll go ahead and uh, turn on our countermeasure system here. Which is just flares. I'll need some night vision goggles to see that toggle. Nope, too much gain. There we go. It's a flare toggle switch. Now we shouldn't need them with the uh, with a non infrared seeking thread, but uh, it's good to, good habit anyway to turn it on. All right, and then uh, let's see what else can we turn on here. The pito. Master arm switch, trimmer, uh, magnetic brake, stability augmentation system, all three channels, pitch, yaw, and roll. And it looks like our nadir system is ready to go, so we'll advance it to Terry, which is uh, overland mode. And there you can see the coordinates, the latitude and longitude coordinates for uh, waypoint one. And we'll set it to this mode, which is going to give our estimated minutes uh, to arrive and our heading to the waypoint. And as you can see here, uh, the made us a an indication with the large needle to the waypoint and a distance in kilometers. So 26.7 kilometers out. Now we need to uh, calibrate our artificial horizon. Press and hold this button. Wait for it to stabilize. We're just getting a little bit of lag because of the video recording software. We need to Ah, latency. Okay, so we need to uh, calculate our backup artificial horizon. I guess that's a pretty important instrument. There we go. Let me just double check here and make sure I'm not forgetting anything. Okay, so we got. Uh, Gyros on, pito, trimmer, magnetic brake, master arm. Nav systems up. All right, I think we're good to go on the pilot side. Let's go ahead. Oh yeah, let's turn on our uh, radar warning receiver. back off the brightness a bit on that. Go ahead and switch over to our co-pilot seat. All we did here was turn on our Vivian camera system and uh, we put it in standby mode. Uh, turn on our uh, armament key here. And we'll select uh, station one as the active station for the uh, HOT 3 missile. Should be ready to go. Close our doors. Should have done that earlier. 
probably got pretty windy in here. Turn down the brightness on the uh, Nadir display. And with that, I think we're ready to go. Let's go take on our night vision goggles. Adjust the gain a bit. Put in some right yaw. Ease up on the collective. And we're off. So now that we're above 90 kilometers an hour, the uh, stability augmentation system kicks in pretty good for our uh, yaw control. Uh, it's pretty much like flying a, flying a super simple airplane at this point. All I'm doing is get a, giving um, just simple and roll inputs here and there to keep the, uh, keep the flight relatively level. Pick up the gain a little bit. And we'll go ahead and ease the uh, collective on up and get some more airspeed going here. So I'm looking at my torque needle and you can see it slowly advancing that. I don't want to get up, up above 90% uh, torque. Generally, you don't want to get above 90, 95% unless you absolutely, unless it's an emergency situation. We'll go ahead and uh, get up to 90. Taking a little shortcut across the water here.
Now, if this uh, urban environment were occupied by enemy, hostiles, whatever you want to call them, insurgents, whatever the case may be, I probably wouldn't take this route. I'd probably either go out lower the Black Sea or uh, probably more, actually more likely way out over the countryside there to avoid uh, getting easily spotted and shot at. But that's not the case here locally. Let's go ahead and have a look see how far we are 12 km or 13 kilometers and according to our Nadir should be there in roughly three minutes. It's a really simple chopper. It's easy to fly. Once you've got your uh, fundamentals down, you know, like collective and countering the, the torque of the rotor at low air speeds uh, when you're taking off and landing and all that jazz, it's uh, pretty easy to uh, to master it, really. couple minutes out. Interestingly, if you read about the history of this, uh, this helicopter, it was, uh, wasn't long after they came out with the hot missile that they came out with this series of uh, light attack choppers to carry that missile because it said hey you know we can have some serious anti-tank firepower in a small lightweight package stick it on one of these tiny little birds and be set to go and then it's been evolving ever since so I'm only carrying two hot three missiles Max is four, but uh, this thing is loaded down pretty heavy with uh, all the crew crew gear and the Vivian camera system. So it becomes kind of a compromise between fuel quantity and uh, how much of a weapon load you've got. So we're getting super close to our firing position now when I ease back on the collective gradually reduce our airspeed now from looking at the map some of the uh, terrain association um, close to the uh, target or the uh, firing position was that there was two small rivers flowing into the Black Sea there's one and two just beyond this is where we'll be setting up at to uh, get an auto, ho auto hover going. So what we'll do is we'll uh, situate ourselves right behind that building there. 
and get an auto hover going there and ease up over it to engage the target. Should be a uh, engagement distance of roughly four kilometers. Hopefully Mr. Shilka won't be able to, to shoot us down easily from there. Okay, so once our vertical speed and our ground speed is close to zero, we can initiate an auto hover via a button on the stick, and that looks like it's successfully activated. And then uh, I'll go ahead and turn off the auto collective so that we can manually adjust our vertical position. And I'm going to go ahead and switch to my weapon systems officer position. Turn on the uh, camera here and then we'll go ahead and peek up over this building here turn up our brightness We'll turn on our MVG so we can see where the airfield is. We should be looking almost right at it. Yeah, all we got to do is zoom in. So let's uh, zoom our Vivian in, slew it over the targets. Go ahead and turn on the uh, bubble zoom in some more. And there's our our dismounts there. Go ahead and get up and we'll uh, re-engage the auto collective. Hold us steady. We'll turn on the uh, infrared mode. Get zoomed all the way. Yeah, we're zoomed in all the way. Now that little uh, tick mark down there in the bottom right indicates that we're ready to fire. So we'll go ahead and uh, we'll laze the Shulka hit him first and as you can see there after we lazed him it's showing he's at a distance of uh, a little over 3750 meters and we'll fire now that hot three it's moving at about Mach 0.7 Takes, should take it roughly 15 seconds to get there. It's a good hit, and as you can see, it took out the uh, dismounts nearby. So we'll go ahead and select the next weapon station, and we'll slew the weapon system over onto the artillery. And I want to see what the uh, launch looks like in night vision. Eh, not too much different. Let's hope that thing doesn't hit any trees on the way. There's a good hit. Yeah, um, when I get done with this, we'll, I'll let you girls go on a bicycle ride, okay? Okay, uh, thank you, alright. Okay, so now with all the targets dead, we'll put the uh, Vivian back in uh, standby mode. Switch back to the pilot position. Go ahead and get ready for the... Uh, disengage the uh, autopilot we'll bug out
and head back home. So now that we're heading back home, we can get get over on our uh, navigation system and select the other waypoint that I have loaded preloaded into it for that. So uh, we'll turn off night vision goggles so we can see what we're doing here. There we go. All right, so headed back home, mission successful. And I'll go ahead and terminate it here to uh, keep the video fairly short. Thanks for watching.